Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Pray First. <coughs> Today is Friday, November 11th, 2022. I can't believe we are already at Friday again and we're in November. <coughs> so how is everyone doing this morning? Remember, this is Pray First. This is a conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. This is where we pause and we make sure that we're giving God the first of our day. I love Pray First. It's an opportunity that we get to read the Word together, um, hear Pastor Doug teaching. Um, we get to encourage each other, pray for each other. I'm outside today, and apparently my cat, Pocky, here's Pocky. Pocky is joining me. I decided to come outside to try and avoid the, um, the dogs inside. But alas, I cannot get, her, uh, get out of being around my animals. I also chose to go um, outside today because it is a beautiful, beautiful day in the Mid-South. If you guys are outdoorsy people, I suggest you get out today because it's going to start getting cold. Good morning, Raymond. Hey, Daryl. Good morning, Neil. Hey, Brenda. Good morning, Tina Hayes. How are you guys doing this morning? I can't believe it's Friday. Good morning, Bonnie. Whew, I'm so excited that it's Friday. It's been a week. Um, it is Friday, November 11th. So before I go much further, I just wanted to... Um, pause and make sure that we're um, honoring veterans today. It is Veterans Day. And Veterans Day is, of course, is anybody who has served in the armed forces. And we had an incredible, we had an incredible, she's, he's pestering me. We had an inc incredible um, weekend this past weekend at, <clears throat> with, with Crosspoint, the church where um, I get to be a part of, just being able to go into senior centers and being able to honor veterans that were there. It was it was amazing. Um, my father is a veteran. That's how he met my mother in Korea. Um, he, um, and then my husband is also a veteran. When we first got married, he was in the Navy. So we traveled all around. So I have a huge, huge heart for veterans, for military families, um, knowing how tough it is. It is tough to be a military wife or a military spouse is more accurate. When my husband was in, we, he was on an Air Force carrier. So all the, and at that time on that ship, it was just men. So I was surrounded by military wives left back at home. But I know after that, you know, they, it was a, they had both genders on board the ship. So there were military spouses left behind. So anyways, <clears throat> And just happy Veterans Day. If you're a veteran and you're watching us right now, um, let us know. Just say, yes, I'm a veteran, so I can make sure that when I'm done with this, I'll say an extra prayer for you. Good morning, Anita. Hi, Donna. Hey, Patty. Good morning, Greg. So, um, all right, so we have been in um, the Bible Project. This is where, of course, we are reading through the Message Bible. We have gone all the way through the New Testament. We're in the Old Testament now. I was excited. We finished Jeremiah, blew through Lamentations, and we are now in Ezekiel. But before I get started reading in Ezekiel, um, hi, Nita Kay. Hey, Corrine. Hey, good morning, Marion. Um, I wanted to say, to make sure you're hashtagging live, hashtagging recorded. Um, I love all the uh, hearts and thumbs that are going up for all of our new time guests to make sure that they know that they are welcomed and we are excited that they're here getting to be a part of our family. Um, I Also, if you have any prayer requests, please, please let me know. We have so many of our friends who just have battled the flu, gotten over the flu. Um, I know that some of our friends um, are personal losses as well as we have friends who have passed. So I'm praying for all of you out there who are dealing with grief right now as well. <clears throat> All right, so I know that Pastor Brandy and Dennis started us in Ezekiel, so I get to start with Ezekiel chapter 4, but um, just to recap, you know, because as we're reading through this incredible, incredible, incredible word from God, sometimes I'm like, okay, I don't get it, and so I try and pause, and I was like looking back and trying to understand Ezekiel, and just, just trying to understand his his perspective as he's writing what God has done to write. And remember that, so Ezekiel, you know, he was a priest and he was living in Jerusalem during the first Babylonian attack. And then here he is being attacked. And then he was the first wave of, um, he was the first wave of exiled prisoners. And so he's, and he's turning 30 years old and all of a sudden he's, so he is not in, you know, cause he's in Babylon now, he's been exiled there. And he's starting to, um, he's starting to, put down what God is telling him after all these visions and some of it just sound absolutely crazy to me but that's kind of I don't know I, I like that I like some I don't know if you guys are like me but sometimes when I'm reading the word I'm like I don't get it because you know sometimes I look at the I'm like I don't get it um 
yes, the Holy Spirit leads me sometimes. I'm like, oh, and that's why the word is alive. And sometimes it says something to me and sometimes it says uh, something else to me, you know, because that, that's what I love about the word. It's a daily word for me. Um, but sometimes I'm like, I don't get it. Um, it gives me a strange sense of comfort that I don't understand everything because it realize, it makes me realize what a finite brain I have. And there's no way as a human I'm ever going to be able to understand everything. I just need to understand <clears throat> Maybe that's not fair during each season of my life. Like sometimes I'll read something like, I don't get that. Um, but I love that I have a finite brain. I love that my finite brain can start at to, to learn, to try and dig into the word, to learn more. So I don't give up if I don't understand it. Just sometimes I'm like, okay, that might be beyond my human brain can understand. And the other thing that struck me this morning when I was thinking about that this is a daily word and that we have to ingest it daily. It started to make me think of... Um, you know, my youngest daughter, we always joke because she gets hangry. So how many of us out here know what hangry means? <clears throat> yes, that's when we are hungry and angry. So like when she gets so hungry, she gets angry and she gets miserable to be around. Miserable. For me, I don't know if I necessarily get hangry if I haven't eaten, but I get really lightheaded and I just don't feel right. And I could feel my sugars and I feel a little shaky. And I thought to myself, you know, and that's how we should be and we are we just may not see it like others might see it in us because like Leah doesn't recognize that she's being hangry but everyone around her knows that she's being hangry I was thinking about that how much is that is like the word like if I'm not in the word I bet that although I might not know it in, in, in immediately um, I bet my pe the people around me can tell I bet the people around me can tell that maybe I'm not that I'm hangry, but that, wow, Anne doesn't seem as patient as she's been, or Anne doesn't seem as whatever fill in the blank as she's been, if I'm not ingesting the word daily. I need to ingest word daily so that my spirit will feel full, so that my spirit, so I don't feel so blah. Anyways, that was my random moat that I was gonna say before I get in. And I had to say a couple good mornings. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Debbie. And Casey on D2. Good morning, Patty. Hey, Chip Myers, how are you? <coughs> okay, good morning, Barbie. All right, enough about hangry. Um, let's get started in chapter four of Ezekiel. Okay. Now, son of man, take a brick and place it before you. Draw a picture of the city of Jerusalem on it. Uh, like I said, this was a little confusing me, so I was kind of looking into it and understanding what this is. So chapters four and five, which is what we're going to dive in today, um, it's going to talk about, um, it, it, there, he's saying it's like he's signing them off. He, he's going to act them out. And so it's kind of like he's acting out parables is what Ezekiel's about ready to do. Okay. Now, son of man, take a brick and place it before you. Draw a picture of the city Jerusalem on it. Then make a model of a military siege against the brick. Build siege walls, construct a ramp, set up army camps, let in battering rams around it. Then get an iron skillet and place it upright between you and the city, an iron wall. Face the model, the city shall be under siege and you shall be the besieger. This is a sign to the family of Israel. Next, lie on your left side and place the sin of the family of Israel on yourself. You will bear their sin for as many days as you lie on your side. <coughs> The number of days you bear their sin will match the number of years of their sin, namely 390. For 390 days you will bear the sin of the family of Israel. Then, after you've done this, turn over and lie down on your right side and bear the sin of the family of Judah. Your assignment this time is to lie there for 40 days, a day for each year of their sin. Look straight at the siege of Jerusalem, roll up your sleeve, shake your bare arm, and preach against her. Can you imagine walking by and seeing Ezekiel doing this on the ground? I will tie you up with ropes, tie you so you can't move or turn over until you have finished the days of the siege. Next, I want you to take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, dried millet and spelt, and mix them in a bowl to make a flatbread. This is your food ration for the 390 days you lie on your side. Measure out about a half a pound for each day and eat it on schedule. Also, measure out your daily ration of about a pint of water and drink it on schedule. Eat the bread as you would a muffin. Bake the muffins out in the open where everyone can see you using dried human dung for fuel. Can you imagine cooking your food over a, a, a firewood, a, a pile of poop? That's what he's saying. Like he's literally making a pile of poop and cooking his food over it. God said, this is what the people of Israel are going to do. Among the pavement nations where I will drive them, they will eat foods that are strictly taboo to a holy people. 
I said, God, my master, never. I've never contaminated myself with food like that. Since my youth, I've never eaten anything forbidden by law, nothing found dead or violated by wild animals. I've never taken a single bite of forbidden food. All right, he said, I'll let you bake your bread over cow dung instead of human dung. <clears throat> then he said to me, son of man, I'm going to cut off all food from Jerusalem. The people will live on starvation rations, worrying where the next meal is coming from, scrounging for the next drink of water. Famine conditions, people will look at one another, see nothing but skin and bones, and shake their heads. This is what sin does. <coughs> Thank you for serving, Marion. Now, son of man, take a shark sword and use it as a straight razor, shaving your head and your beard. Then, using a set of balancing scales, divide the hair into thirds. When the days of the siege are over, take one third of the hair and burn it inside the city. Take another third, chop it into bits with sword, and sprinkle it around the city. The final third you'll throw to the wind. Then I'll go after them with a sword. Retrieve a few of the hairs and slip them into your pocket. Take some of them and throw them into the fire. Burn them up. From them, fire will spread to the whole family of Israel. This is what God the Master says. This means Jerusalem. I set her at the center of the world. All the nations ranged to get around her, but she rebelled against my laws and ordinances, rebelled far worse than the nations ranged around her. Sheer wickedness, refused my guidance, ignored, ignored my directions. Therefore, this is what God, the master says. You've been more headstrong and willful than any of the nations around you, refusing my guidance, ignoring my directions. You've sunk to the gutter level of those around you. Therefore, this is what God, the master says. I'm setting myself against you. Yes, against you, Jerusalem. I'm gonna punish you in the full sight of the nations. Because of your disgusting no God idols, I'm gonna do something to you that I've never done before and will never do again. I'm gonna turn families, listen to this. I'm gonna turn families into cannibals, parents eating children, children eating parents, punishment indeed. And whoever's left over, I'll throw to the winds. Therefore, as sure as I am the living God, decree of God, the master, because you polluted my sanctuary with your obscenities and disgusting no God idols, I'm pulling out. <clears throat> Not an ounce of pity will I show you. A third of your people will die of either disease or hunger inside the city. A third will be killed outside the city, and a third will be thrown to the winds and chased by killers. Only then will I calm down and let my anger cool. Then you'll know that I was serious about this all along, and I'm a jealous God and not to be trifled with. When I get done with you, you'll be a pile of rubble. Nations who walk by will make coarse jokes. When I finish my angry punishment and searing rebukes, <clears throat> You'll be reduced to an object of ridicule and mockery, turned to into a horror story circulating among the surrounding nations. I, God, have spoken. When I shoot my lethal famine arrows at you, I'll shoot to kill. Then I'll step up the famine and cut off food supplies. Famine and more famine. And then I'll send in the wild animals to finish off your children. Epidemic disease, unrestrained murder, death, and I will have sent it. I, God, have spoken. Chapter 6. Then the word of God came to me. Son of man, now turn and face the mountains of Israel and preach against them. O mountains of Israel, listen to the message of God. The master, God, the master speaks to the mountains and hills. To the ravines and the valleys, I'm about to destroy your sacred God and goddess shrines. All level your altars, bust up your sun god pillars, and kill your people as they bow down to your no god idols. I'll stack the dead bodies of Israelites in front of your idols and then scatter your bones around your shrines. Every place where you've lived, the towns will be torn down and the pagan shrines demolished. Altars busted up, idols smashed, all your custom-made sun gods, pillars, and ruins. Corpses everywhere you look. Then you'll know that I am God. But I'll let you, I'll feel you escape the killing as you are scattered through other lands and nations. In the foreign countries where they're taken as prisoners of war, they'll remember me. They'll realize how devastated I was by their betrayals, by their voracious lust for gratifying themselves in their idolatries. They'll be disgusted with their evil ways, disgusted to God in the way they've lived. They'll know that I am God. They'll know that my judgment against them was no empty threat. This is what God, the master says. Clap your hands, stamp your feet, yell out, no, 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 because of all the evil obscenities rife in Israel. They're gonna be killed dying of hunger, dying of disease, death everywhere you look. People dropping like flies, people far away dying, people near nearby dying, and whoever's left in the city starving to death. 
Why? Because I'm angry, furiously angry. They'll realize that I am God when they see their people's corpses strewn over and around all their ruined sex and religion shrines on the bare hills and in the lush fertility groves and all the places where they indulge in their sensual rites. I'll bring my hand down hard on them, demolish the country wherever they live, turn it into wasteland from one end to the other, from the wilderness to Ribla. Then they'll know that I am God. Ooh, goodness gracious. Yeah, God's, God's judgment, never any fun. There is hope. Now, the beginning of Ezekiel, lots of judgment. He's going to talk about hope and all that fun stuff as well. But I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Ooh, I usually try and say at the very end what I'm reading so it's easier when the next pastor picks up. We're going to start in chapter 7 when we continue with the Bible Project. All right, friends. Well, <clears throat> again, kind of recap if you missed the beginning of Pray First, because a lot of times that happens. Just want to say, um, pause and make sure that you guys all recognize that it is Veterans Day, that we're cognizant today of the sacrifices made by veterans. I know I had mentioned earlier that, um, that, our, that our church, Cross Point, went out last Sunday and we were able to minister and love on um, veterans in our, our in our senior senior homes and I think one of the moments that struck me was um, well so many moments but one particular one there's a little old um, elderly senior woman and she was um, she was pushing her walker and in the walker was a box and in her box she had um, it was just a little box she had this picture of her husband and you know it was when he was Probably very young black and white photo of her husband and then on top of that she also had a picture of her son and then there was a, a colored photo of her grandson and she was so proud to show me and to show us those pictures saying this was my husband and this is my son and grandson because they all had served and so we were acknowledging her and you know thanking her because again it's a mil the, it's the veteran who served but the military family sacrificed <clears throat> so um, then I was talking to the, 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 the coordinator at the senior, senior center and she was telling me, she's like that, um, like we had an extra plaque. She's oh, that actually goes to that woman because see her husband had recently passed. So it was our, it was our pleasure to present her with a plaque that we had given the veterans and just her expression of gratitude. So just make sure you're thanking a veteran today. Um, praying for veterans today. Cause you know, some of them, it, it, it didn't come back to you. It wasn't easy for them to come back. I know our very own John Blakely at Cross Point said that the moment he got back, he was arrested because he um, someone spit on him when he got back, when he landed back into the, the United States. He was not appreciative for what he sacrificed for this country. So, whew, so make sure that you're praying for vets. <clears throat> okay, I hope you guys are um, enjoying the Bible Project. I hope you guys are enjoying what Pastor Doug has been preaching on Wednesday. I'm teaching here on Wednesdays and Thursdays because, you know, he's kind of recapping the small groups that we've been working through uh, at um, Cross Point where we're talking about standing strong in the storm. So if you're part of a small group, I just encourage you, you have two more weeks, stand strong. Make sure you're finishing the study strong with your small group, keeping in those circles because, you know, we are better together. And, um, <clears throat> and that, which reminds me, that was the last series, Better Together. We are launching a brand new series, a brand new series at Crosspoint this weekend. Pastor Doug is starting a new series and he's calling it Devoted, Devoted. And it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Okay. This is not one that you're going to want to miss. Um, I, it's, I say that all the time, but you, you got to come and it's always best to in, invite a new per, uh, people at the beginning of a new series. It's just fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun at Crosspoint because it's not just, you know, we're, as we're coming in to do things differently, we got some fun things pr planned for our elements and for our focus. So come on in, join us if you're local, join us online. It's um, at Crosspoint online. That's our Facebook tag there. I also post the message always on this page as well. So Whew, okay, that was a lot for me to say, and I talk fast, so I hope everyone has an incredible, incredible weekend. Um, I am off my mother's birthday today. Gosh, she's 81. She turns 81 today, so I'm about ready to go take her to, and my daughters to breakfast to celebrate her and run her around and let her just um, have Ann Day, so whatever she wants. Her daughter, so she, goes, she doesn't call me Ann. She calls me my daughter. I'm going to go see what my, um, she wants me to do with her today, so... 
I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so very, very much for all my friends that join us here today. <clears throat> um, help them have an incredible day, Lord. Special prayer for the veterans out there, Lord. Thank you for their sacrifice to help us to have the freedoms that we have. No spirit but your Holy Spirit. Have your way with them today. And we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You know, one thing I want to say, uh, this is random that just crossed my mind, is... Um, the one thing that I love about veterans is the camaraderie that they have with each other. Like you get two veterans together and there's that connection that automatically happens and it's beautiful. It's because they because they serve together, because they understand they understand a little bit more together rather than what an outsider would understand of them because they went through something together. And I want that to be like us for disciples. I want us that when we when we see each other, when we meet each other, we have that automatic connection because we have something in common you know that's what the vets were to see them um i can tell one more story from this last sunday so we had a younger a younger gentleman I, I might guess he's probably still in his 20s i didn't ask how old he was but he came in and he was in the marines he served in the marines and he wanted to be one of our presenters to present a plaque to one of the vets in the senior center and, and it, there, there was an automatic connection he goes yeah i served in the marines me too and just the way they could talk to each other you could just see that look in their eyes when they realized that they had that commonality that's how we as disciples have that commonality as well all right guys that's it for me you guys have a fantastic day bye thank you